But the CSR is contributing to the assessment reports of the International Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. And in fact, we have no less than three CSR researchers serving as coordinating lead authors or lead authors on the assessment report number six of the IPCC. Our continent, we are particularly vulnerable to climate change variability and change. And that's even if the Paris Agreement is adhered to, even if the very strict 1.5 um, uh, increase in temperature is achievable. And this is because in the African um, subtropics, we're already seeing that the, that the temperature changes of, of greater magnitude than the global average. And they're projected to rise at about twice the global rate. Um, and, and of course, we also have the compounding situation where most of our economies and all of our economies are developing, and we have then relatively low adaptive capacity. We are supporting and understanding what is happening on the African continent with the support of DST and through our own thematic fund programs, where we have essentially invested something like 20 million rand in developing the first Africa's first Earth system model. This is the climate change model, which will make input into the next report, the sixth assessment report um, of the IPCC. So what does this model do? Firstly, it's the first one for the, for the African continent, the first Earth system model. It's a coupled model, so it's linking oceans, the work that we do in the Southern Ocean, the atmosphere, and land. Um, and we will incorporate the physics and chemistry of the atmosphere and the oceans and the interactions. And what are we aiming to do with this model? We are trying to answer questions like whether climate change will result in the more frequent occurrence of El Ninos, El Nino events, which, uh, which are linked obviously to the drought in Southern Africa, and also whether Africa may expect the onset of unprecedented heat waves. What does this mean for our seasonal and for our, our short-term um, cost, um, cost, uh, um, forecasts on climate and weather? Now, there are, 30, there, are only, there are 30 models in the world today that deal with climate change, which all fit into the IPC um, context, but there's only one, only one that is focused on our continent, and that's the one on which we are working. And so you can see why it is so important that we are successful at this and we can get the granularity we need to support the kind of decision making that's important. Then at the CSIR, we are looking through an African lens. And so part of this is, is that as a scientist, as a climate scientist, as an atmospheric scientist, you know, you're going to look at the processes that impact you. In North America, they have the Arctic chills. They're going to want to model that correctly. You want to be certain to get the wildflowers, the terrestrial interactions in the forests in, you know, if you're in Europe, in the forests in Russia, correct? However, in Africa, we are concerned with the processes that impact us, and we're really looking at those from the Southern Ocean to the land surface dynamics, the ocean atmosphere dynamics, and how they all combine. So that's why we think it's so important that there is an African lens, that there's an African-led climate model. It is still a global climate model. We do still have to model the, the trees in Russia, but we're really focusing on improving the representation of the systems in the continent.